This is FYI on your TV. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Charlie Acourt with me all the way from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks I, for having me. I originally, I got a hold of you because you're going to be uh, performing around our area here for the Festival of Small Halls. However, you're right in the middle of Fiona, uh, the Hurricane Fiona right now too. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that and how it's affecting you, Charlie. Sure. Yeah, well, it, uh, I mean, it came in uh, ferociously and violently on, on Friday night. And, um, and for hours, even before landfall, the winds were really, really high uh, in the Halifax uh, metro area. And, um, and it wasn't until, of course, uh, late into the night that uh, Fiona actually made landfall uh, up near um, Canso, Guysboro County, um, near Cape Breton Island. And um, and so Halifax uh, Halifax took uh, a, a, you know took a few lumps. Um, uh, schools are still out uh, due to um, debris and power outages and that sort of thing. Luckily here, uh, in our neck of the woods, um, this neighborhood happens to have power. It was out for about 48 hours, but uh, came back on late on Sunday. And uh, but the 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 devastation is just far reaching. Um, you know, you look at the reports that are coming out of Port of Basque, Newfoundland right now of, of just utter devastation. Um, you know, sadly, we've, we've registered a few fatalities um, uh, through uh, across PEI, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And um, it's it's tough. It's uh, it, you know, it's 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 going to be a long haul to uh, to come out from underneath this for a lot of communities. So whereabouts are you? Are you in the city? Are you on the outskirts? How, how where are you? Yeah, Dartmouth is the sister city to Halifax, so we uh, uh, we're all connected through the Halifax Harbor. There's Halifax and Bedford and Dartmouth, and uh, and then the outlying communities. And so, uh, parts of uh, Halifax and Dartmouth are still um, in darkness as of this morning. Um, you know, when I when I last saw the record, uh, we had gone from I think a peak of 525,000 power customers. Uh, uh, at the peak of the the uh, damage, and uh, and I think when I saw it yesterday, we were somewhere around 160, 170 uh, thousand outages. So, uh, you know, the crews are are definitely uh, working around the clock, but uh, the the sheer magnitude of the destruction, um, and in some parts really rural where it's actually quite hard to get to. Uh, my father lives just outside of Truro, and which is uh, quite out in the country. And, and it's, uh, uh, you know, some of the destruction with the uh, the power lines out in the country in those rural areas are really hard to get to. The logging roads that would have gotten uh, crews up to those lines are impassable with down trees. And so there's been low, like low flying helicopters um, circling over those areas to try to survey where exactly the damage is. And I mean, that that's scary enough too. Like when, when the roads, you can't even get to, on the roads to be able to get to your, your family or friends to, to access them, or, or I, I'm sure the the lines are down too to even talk to them. That's got to be scary. It is. It's been tricky. It's uh, you know, in, in in times like this, it's a there's a lot of compart uh, compartmentalization of of priorities and the things that need to happen. You know, uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, you get the the trees off the road so that emergency vehicles can get through. It doesn't have to be pretty. You just get the trees off into the ditches, and then you know, Department of Transportation. Hopefully they will come through to follow up with removing those trees from the ditches because, you know, winter's, you know, not that long away. And, and when those storms hit here, the snow accumulation uh, in the ditches alone can be, uh, the, you know, can be, make for high drifts. So when those ditches are filled with fallen trees, uh, it just compounds the, uh, the problem. So um, over the weeks and months uh, ahead, there's going to be like a, a, it's going to be a multi-phase restoration of the province. And I mean, technology the way it is right now too, we, we knew Fiona, uh, the, uh, the hurricane was coming in too, but you know, to know it's coming and for it to actually happen to you too, two totally different things. Two totally different things because mm -hmm. we've had our fair share of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, events where it's been substantial damage, but then we've had our fair share of events where we're preparing for the worst and then nothing happens. And so sometimes that whole mentality of uh, of uh, 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 wolf crying sheep uh, it, it can be um, some sometimes we don't always know it's like ah it's not going to be as bad as they say it is and sometimes it isn't in this case it really was and and thankfully we had the lead up time to to try to get as much prepared as uh, as possible and, and it's times like this two people come together 
Absolutely. The, this is where you see the camaraderie uh, shine through in, in communities, especially in those communities, even where uh, neighbors are maybe literally a country mile apart. Um, uh, people are checking in on each other um, and, uh, and just making sure that there's, uh, there's some water in the well um, and that there's, uh, you know, maybe a little, uh, a little uh, kerosene for the lamp and that sort of thing. Um, and so that's that's wonderful to see. You know, the 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 more urban settings, it's it's a little easier to kind of band together. Um, and the the rural communities, uh, it can be a little more challenging. But it, uh, the community spirit is, is there to make sure that uh, uh, people are looked after. Absolutely. And you I mean you're you're only as good as your last emergency. To, but to be able to prepare, you know, for what you actually need. You, I mean, you're saying kerosene, that sort of thing too. Water, yeah. Yeah, just extra food. Yeah, I mean the the uh, you know EMO and and provincial and federal uh, 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 governments are there, there's always gaps in no matter what your preparedness level is and so this is going to be there, there'll be lots of follow up discussions on infrastructure everything from um, you know uh, running lines underground with Nova Scotia Power uh, that that discussion is going to continue things like emergency preparedness. Uh, on a municipal and on on a town level is the, the, all those uh, discussions are on the table, but they are tabled for another time. Right now is the it's the making sure that uh, you, if you know pe places are still without power and in some and some cases as a result no telephone line or landline. Uh, if they're in areas where cell service is very spotty, uh, if you're in a position to hop in a vehicle and safely drive to that place just to check up on someone, you you should probably do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Now I was looking at your Facebook page. I believe it was your Facebook page too last night. I think a tree just missed your car. Huh. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was remarkable. Uh, we had this beautiful uh, old maple tree in our front yard, and uh, of course, like I said, living in a in an urban setting, houses are a lot closer together. So the fact that it missed anything other than the driveway was an absolute miracle, uh, given the what it could have damaged. And so, yeah, we were blocked in for the uh, duration of the storm, but, um, um, you know, the city was, the city was prepared and they, they came out full force, like as soon as it was safe to do so. And, um, uh, had swept through the neighborhood to, uh, clean up the down trees and, and remove them post haste so that, uh, vehicles could get out of the driveways. And, and, uh, and so we were, we were fortunate that there was no, no, um, you know, the damage that we suffered is is um, aesthetic at best. So we're lucky in that regard. Excellent, excellent. I mean, when you think of the the wind having the potential to pull and uproot a, a tree that's a hundred years old, it's phenomenal. Well, they, there's a, a I don't know if you noticed it, but there's a a very um, um, poignant uh, story floating around Nova Scotia social media right now about what was what's affectionately referred to as the Shuby tree. And there was this, it was this beautiful tree in uh, Shubenacadie that was, uh, uh, had been dated at over 300 years old. And uh, unfortunately, it, uh, it gave way to the storm. And so um, when you think of something that has lasted 300 years, given what the, uh, uh, the nation itself uh, as a nation is 150 <laughs> or 155, something like that. Like to think of a tree that's lasted for centuries. Um, finally giving way gives you uh, uh, an indication of just the, uh, the the sheer strength that Fiona was packing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, we, we wish the best for everybody out there. Uh, thank you very much for being able to join us. Thank you for making this, this interview happen, too, because uh, just the fact that you've got enough power there to be able to talk to us today is is. Uh, it's inspiring. I'm glad. I've it got happens. the hamsters out back running double duty on the turbine. So, <laughs> uh, you know, they've 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 earned a drink of water. Oh uh, well, you know, it's people like you with a great sense of humor that get you through this too. You know, this is amazing. Very good. Thank this you very much. I, and, and you know, I see the big trucks going uh, along the highways coming out to help you guys too, and and know that you're in our thoughts, you're in our prayers, and and hope everything goes well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Charlie Acourt, all the way from Dartmouth in Nova Scotia, right in the middle of Hurricane Fiona. Thank you very much for joining us today, Charlie.